Welcome to the YouTube channel of the HPC Certification Forum. My name is Julian Kunkel and I will today describe how to contribute to the HPC Certification Forum's certification standard. If you haven't heard of the HPC Certification Forum, I will give a very brief introduction to this topic and after that I provide some links underneath of the video such that you can figure out more details about it. So today's main topic is how to organize the competences and how to define new competences using some of the tools and strategies that we developed as part of the HPC certification forum. Have a look at the learning objectives once you are done to ensure that you got a good understanding of the topics. So what is the HPC certification forum? The goals of it is to standardize the HPC knowledge into fine-grained competences. Basically, you will, we are developing a big puzzle of competences that any practitioner, we are very inclusive in this term, so anyone basically interested in parallel computing could use this puzzle piece to find out these individual pieces of competences that are relevant to him or her and then learn and train them. So we support explicitly navigation as part of this knowledge representation. Our second goal is to establish then international recognized certificates that attest this knowledge and finally to provide tools and an ecosystem around these HPC competences of which this video today is part. So when we talk about a competence standard we have to understand what this actually means. So in the HPC CF we have developed a skill tree which organizes individual competences. And the competence we say is a skill which defines the background objectives, learning outcomes. And this kind of skill tree helps to organize these competences as a tree for the sake of the um, attendee. So we have at the moment more than 100 skills. And you see here only the top level of the tree. But you can see different branches. So for example, HPC knowledge covers theoretical knowledge in different aspects of HPC and parallel computing. You find here, and we have a subtree which is about the usage of the HPC environment. And that basically means not necessarily as a user on a, a parallel computer, you need to understand the theory behind it. Sometimes you just, someone just needs to really run so, a, a parallel application on the system. So all those kind of um, necessary competences can be found in the use subtree. We also have a subtree that deals about performance engineering, which means if you need to optimize your code or the tune, your pe the performance of your parallel application, you may need to look into this subtree to understand how to do this effectively. So in that sense, it complements our theoretic branch and our applied branch here. Finally, there are some users that actually are developers of parallel applications. And those need to look into the software development subtree. Now you may wonder why I talked only about four. So indeed we have also started to look into a subtree of four administrators and into a subtree that is specifically about big data analytics, but those are really just at the beginning and need more help, which is exactly why I'm talking about this topic in this video, because this is a community effort and everyone is welcome to contribute in this standard. Okay, so to remember, the competence standard basically is the definition of each of those individual skills together with the organization in the tree. Note that actually it's possible for a skill that you define, for example, in the knowledge part here, that it is referenced by another skill somewhere in the use part as a subskill. 
This allows you to navigate between the trees, so it's in fact a graph. Here is an example of a high-level skill, shortened, that illustrates the concept. So we naturally distinguish between skills that you find on the leaf level, and these are very practical skills that don't need to be refined further, and very coarse-grained skills, such as, for example, the skill to use the HPC environment. This is an inner node of this tree, and rather coarse-grained. So, in this skill, it has the name Slurm Workload Manager, it has a given ID, the B means it's the basic version of a skill, you also have intermediate and um, at more advanced versions, but at the moment we focus at the basic versions. So it normally provides a short background, here again it's rather more shortened than in the real skill. And this background is written, shall be written in such a language that any practitioner that is new to this topic can understand what it is about if he follows down, he or she follows down the tree from the top to the leaf where this skill is all organized. So a skill has an aim. Here we see two aims. One is about a theoretic part how to comprehend and describe the basic architecture of the tool, and secondly, to actually use some tools to run and monitor parallel applications. These are the high-level aims and goals of this skill. And then we find a couple of learning objectives. And the key goal with the learning objective on the leaf level is that they are typically examinable. So for everyone that knows Slurm, so with Slurm you, there is a program called SALloc and SBatch, which allows you to submit so-called batch jobs on a cluster system and this learning outcome basically describes that the user must be able to do that. So there is many more information provided here, but as this video is mainly about how to contribute, I don't want to look into these details, but I show you interactively how to actually do that. So. If you go on the HPC certification web page, which I just have over here, you see on the top level the different sub pages of our home page. For example, if you click on competences, you get a definition of what the competence standard is, and under most importantly, under availability, you get information how to access it. And I want to show you the different ways how to do it and actually to manipulate it. Let's start with the first point, which is actually looking into the sources of such definitions. So if we follow the link, we we'll would get to this GitHub page and in this GitHub page, we see actually the IDs of the different six branches over here and we can navigate them. So I can go, for example, to the use skill one, one, B, for example. This skill is about the command line interface. And it, as you can see, different sections here, you see the background, you see the ID on the top, you see the aim, and you see the learning outcomes. And also, if it would have sub skills and references, it would be over here. So this is basically the core description of it. So if you want to manipulate it and contribute to the standard, there are different ways. One way is you basically use GitHub to clone from this URL. And I suppose you know how to use Git, I hope. So here you say, I basically clone this remote repository to my local repository, um, my local file system. And here we go. So I can see the different skills in the different directories. And you see also there are a couple of scripts here. And there is yet another file which I want to start thinking about. So this .mm file actually is a mind map file that can be opened using the tool Freeplane, which works under Linux, Windows, and Mac. Free to download, of course. And with this tool, you can basically go 
and see the um, skill organization. So I can actually close down the notes. So, and you see the basic tree, how it looks like. So if you need to make bigger changes to the certification standard, for example, you need to add a couple of skills, several skills, and you, wa you want to organize them. The mind map is really a good idea to start with. So, for example, you can go down to the HPC knowledge and you see here the name and the ID prefix. So it's, this is K for knowledge and this is the title and this is subskill one with the title supercomputers. So this goes deeper and deeper and at the leaf, often what we do with the mind map is that we add some thoughts about this particular skill, what we want to talk about. Basically, an aspect of the learning objectives to really organize ourselves. So in this case, if you look at the overview, so supercomputers input output overview, this was a skill we generated lately. And um, we want to talk a bit about the applications, parallel file systems, file systems, block systems, and so on, give a little bit of definitions and link it with another skill. So it's very easy to add a new sub item. And even if I wanted to add a sub skill, I need to prefix it with the name, a number, and a title. Let me add for now test skill. Okay, and I want this skill to do do something, right? So, all right. So at some point you, you save the skill tree because you are done with it. And keep in mind that the HPT certification forum has at the moment a draft tree and is still a lot in motion. So there's still opportunity to move skills around add new skills and so forth. And we will periodically update the skill tree. I will talk about this later, how this works. Um, so don't worry, just play around with it. Have a go and show us basically your ideas and share them best in our Slack channel. Okay, coming back. So I now made this change, I added test skill. Let's close it. Now we provide a skill Ask. We provide a Python script, synchronize mm, which basically helps to create and update the markdown definitions here. So it's really key to start from the mind map and then synchronize. So if I call this, what it does say, um, it adds the skill in undis position and it basically expects you know, this title, and if I look into it, it actually says overview. So what did I do wrong? Well, probably the subskill, the respective subskill with this particular title and number was already existing. So let me have a look into our input output test skill. So let's add another one, call it test skill two. Okay, just for the sake of ensuring that it works. So I run it, ah, now that works. All right, so So, and we wonder why the tool actually reported that there was something existing under this level. And there shouldn't be any subskill under the skill one, which is true. So I just ran again the synchronize NRM tool and which created the respective subskills. It turned out that we had created before some stubs underneath this skill so um, the tool reported correctly that there have been other skills and I just cleaned it up. So let not, I hope you don't let yourself discouraged from this experience. Actually it shows the tools work pretty well, right? And they figure out if there is an inconsistency 
between the free plane version and between the markdown, which is the goal. So now I have created the respective files. So you see it created the, the correct sections and what I can do, I open them and I made some changes. For example, I can say, um, you know, a given aim, this is aim one and I can add some outcomes. Note that you don't have to add sub skills. The tool would automatically detect from, uh, from the mind mapping if there is a sub skill and then it would add such a reference. So um, what should uh, the users be able, the practitioners be able to do after the skill has been learned? I'd say they are able to design a new test skill. Okay, so I save it. Once I'm done, I would normally do it. I would add it with git, git add the respective files. I see all the changes that are made in this current revision. I would add all those changes. And once I'm done, I commit using git commit and I would push back to my clone of the HPC certification form and then I do a pull request. So for those that have no idea what Git, how Git works, not a problem. We have also a way to edit the skills directly on the web page. So basically when you go back to the HPC certification web page and you go back to competences, you can find that you can see a wiki which is editable when you follow this link and it gives a short introduction how to edit it. You can go here on the skill tree and this is basically a mirror of the GitHub markdown versions. So let's check out again what we made wrongly. So we go to background, supercomputing, IO, overview and indeed there was this bogus skills for some reason overview netcdf and hd5 that shouldn't exist so let let me remove them actually anyone can uh, sign into this and is able to um, contribute to it to do so you need to register by providing a username a name and your email address once you are done you can log in and i will now log in and after I logged in, I'm able to basically edit the pages. And I will do this by now removing basically the content of those pages and removing the skills because they were bogus, like I said before. And we did a test. Okay, three skills removed. Now maybe I make the decision to edit this skill. So I click on edit this page. I can again type in anything I like under aim, outcomes and so forth. And I push save. Oh wait, let me give this skill um, provide, provides an overview, overview of relevant um, storage or input output layers. Okay, let me save it. Zack, done. Okay, now I actually contributed a little bit to the certification standard. So I showed you now, firstly, how to use GitHub to contribute to it. Secondly, how to use the free plane tool to actually make changes to the structure. And thirdly, really brief how to con make changes here. So the question of course is what kind of changes do you want to do and how far do you want to go with those changes to make sure that they are appropriate. It doesn't make sense to work on four months and then try to kind of merge in a huge chunk of changes. It is better to make really fine grained changes and communicate with the HPC certification forum and its members to ensure that these changes are actually will be finally be landing. So 
there is, in fact, there are a couple of processes revolving around how to contribute and what it means. And you can check it out when you go to the web page under processes. You find first the information about how the competence standards evolve, how versioning and release management is done, how you can contribute with suggestions. So check this out. Basically what we do is we, we decide based on the changes, how, int how intrusive they are, who makes the ultimate de decision in these contributions. At the moment though, um, as we have still so much work to do, basically every change that is uh, constructive is welcome. May it even be to go on the web page and just fix a typo. Right, I just provided a very basic description here. And there is a lot of descriptions already existing. Underneath, for example, uh, the use subtree, use of the HPC environment, cluster operating systems, the whole subtree basically is filled. And you can get some idea how this works from here. Secondly, um, when you click on guidelines for contributions, you get an idea how this individual section shall be structured, except from what I just showed to you. Okay, so that was this little introduction. And I hope um, you, I, you have now some interest to contribute. Um, feel free to uh, click here on um, participate, yes, and join our mailing lists, check out, meet our meetings in our Slack channel. We, we are really looking forward to contributors because it's a huge effort to get this right and this is a community effort. Thank you very much.